Hi everyone, welcome back to Law School Gems with Bria. My name is Bria and I'm the founder of Law School Gems. I am also a practicing in-house attorney for a publicly traded company working in their marketing and advertising legal group here in Dallas, Texas. I am excited to be here with you today. Today we are going to be talking about legal writing. And this is a topic I really wanted to emphasize and so I'm gonna spend the entire week talking about it. That means both videos dropping this week, part one and part two are all about legal writing. And the reason that is, is because a lot of practitioners are telling me that law students are graduating and they really don't know how to write, or they're spending lots of time having to train them on just basic legal writing principles, right? And so today we're gonna to be talking about best practices that we can implement in order to set you up for success when it comes to legal writing. And we're gonna be doing that for the rest of the week. So look out for the next video that we'll be dropping this week about legal writing part two. But before we dive in, I wanted to affirm you today and to encourage you to unlock or unleash any hidden talents that you have within you. All talent is distributed equally, but not opportunity. So you can always go out there and seek opportunity, but you can't seek out that talent, right? That lives within you and you got to nourish that and you got to nurture that. So go out there, strive for your goals, accomplish those, set attainable goals for yourself and really apply your talents and your skill sets. And we got this and I'm going to hang in there with you. I got your back throughout this whole first semester of law school. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We are born to win. Come and learn the basics with law school So legal writing is different from how you may have written in college or in other forms, including past employers. Legal writing addresses an issue or sometimes several issues that require a resolution. To resolve the issue, you must research, identify the applicable rules, and then apply those rules to the facts of your writing assignment or fact pattern. Again, this application is known as your analysis of the issue. After you've analyzed the facts of your fact pattern or assignment, the analysis will lend itself to the proper conclusion, which is the resolution of the issue. Once you've accomplished these necessary steps in this order, which is the simplest method and manner in which to show a professor you can resolve a legal issue, you will have completed your writing assignment or at least be on your way to resolving other issues. So the first step is to ensure that you are drafting your responses to a fact pattern or answering a writing assignment in the preferred method or manner of your professor. In other words, if your professor wants your response to be an IRAC format, CRAC format, or CREAC format, listen to your professor. And we talked about those formats in previous videos of Law School Gems, so please be sure to pay attention to those if you need a refresher on that. If you recall, we briefly spoke about fact patterns in previous Law School Gem videos as well. A fact pattern will often present several issues that you will have to spot and this is called issue spotting. And you'll call these things out in your response. The fact pattern may or may not give you the rule applicable to an issue depending on the context. If you're in a closed book exam or midterm, you will be expected to know the rule, identify whether it's applicable to the issue within the fact pattern, and call it out within your response. In this context, the rule is something you must commit to memory so that you can incorporate it into your response. If you were in an open book exam, midterm, or legal writing course, the rule will either be provided by a professor via case law or research materials or through research you've performed on your own time. Thereafter, you'll apply the rule to the facts of the fact pattern. Based upon your analysis of the facts, you'll select a conclusion that's often the inverse of an issue, usually starting with yes or no at the beginning of the sentence. You'll apply this method to the rest of any unresolved issues. Now let's talk about timing. Because legal writing is different than any other writing you may have done, it may take some time to get used to ensure you are giving yourself enough time to properly draft a response to a writing assignment. The timeline you adhere to for drafting your response should consist of the following pit stops. So first, you want to make sure that you outline a skeleton as follow. And this method or manner of dissecting a response to a fact pattern may look differently depending on your professor's preference. It's recommended that you choose again the best method or manner that your professor has recommended and stick to that consistently throughout your entire legal writing assignment, right? So for every issue, you're going to stick to that preference. So the outline for your skeleton will look similar to this. You'll start off with an introduction to introduce what 
the topic of that legal writing assignment is about. Then you'll go into the facts, then the issue, then the rule, then the analysis, and then the conclusion for that particular IRAC. And then an overall conclusion at the end of your legal writing assignment that addresses all of the issues you've resolved. This should be the first version of your response to the fact pattern that you'll submit to a professor or your writing resource center. Now, a writing resource center is something that your law school may have available to you so that way you can get review or feedback on your first draft or second draft or pretty much just your initial drafts of your legal writing response, right? And that may be available to you. That was called a writing resource center at my law school and may look like something different for you. But also some of your professors may allow you to bring them different drafts of your legal writing response before you actually have to turn in the final draft. Take advantage of that, right? But you also have to bake in time to cook up that first draft or that second draft. Now, with respect to writing resource centers or even your professors, I know we said that we want to bake in time for their feedback, but usually you'll have to make an appointment in advance to get on their books. So keep that in mind. Once they provide you with their feedback, you'll rewrite your first draft so that you produce a second draft. Print off your second draft and review and revise because you'll catch more errors than you would reviewing the same on your computer. Revisions at this phase should also consist of the following, right? So we wanna make sure we're checking spelling and grammar, that you're checking formatting, that you're checking structuring your sentences and removing any run-ons, organizing your second draft, condensing and making sentences sharper and more concise, removing any wordiness and redundancy, using proper verb subject agreement within your sentences, looking for more powerful and precise ways of making a statement, being clear with your words, don't hide the ball from your professor. In other words, get your point across as precise and as clearly as possible. Speak in plain English without hard to understand explanations. Make your response easy to follow for the professor as if the professor has never seen your fact pattern or writing assignment before or has no idea what it is that's going on within your response or this fact pattern or your legal writing assignment. And as though you were walking them through novel information for the first time. Read aloud your printed draft because it helps you hear how sentences and verbiage sound, which will help you determine if a sentence can be written better. If when reading aloud, any sentences sound awkward or like you wouldn't say that normally when you're speaking, then work on it some more. And you'll incorporate those revisions from your printed second draft and to a third draft and hopefully that third draft will serve as your final draft. But sometimes it doesn't just end there. Sometimes you'll have several different versions of a legal writing assignment, and that's okay too, especially when you're first starting out. But this is just some great information to start with, best practices, and usually a good rule of thumb is three drafts in order to get you started. And like I said, that may vary depending on how complicated your issues are, how complicated your drafts need to be revised or reviewed, etc. Notably, you should not draft your conclusion or facts section until you've completed your analysis. Now, why is that? The reason is you don't know which facts will be relevant to the overall writing assignment until you've analyzed them. Analysis of the facts will help you know which facts are worth inserting into your facts section. Rule of thumb, your facts section shouldn't be longer than half a page. The exception to this rule is one to one and a half pages for this section, but again, this is the exception and meant for only longer fact patterns or writing assignments. Once you've properly analyzed an issue, your analysis will direct you towards the proper conclusion. At this point, you may then insert your conclusion at the end of each IRAC, and then again, the overall conclusion at the end of your entire response. Until you've analyzed the facts, save as placeholders these sections dedicated to your facts and conclusion. Now let's talk about research. Many students don't know where to start to find research or case law to support their responses to fact patterns and or writing assignments. Resources are as followed. Always check to see if your professor provided you with the necessary case law or research materials that they want you to use only for the purpose of addressing the fact pattern or writing assignment. If this is the case, you won't need to perform your own research. You'll rely on the materials given to you by the professor and this heavy lifting will be done for you. If your professor has not given you the necessary case law or research materials and you don't know where to begin, I typically start with a Google search of the relevant issues, right? So this Google search will produce several easily accessible and user-friendly relevant material that will relate to your issue. From your Google search, 
type in the names of cases or other secondary research materials, and then enter those on your legal search engine. Now let's talk about the different legal search engines that exist out there. One of them is LexisNexis and the other one is Westlaw. Your law school should provide you with user credentials for free as a part of your law school tuition. And relying on these search engines, you may have a preference of one over the other, and that's okay. But if you are running into dead ends, finding what you were looking for on the search engine, chances are you were likely to find the information you were looking for on another search engine. Mostly, these search engines will have the same information, research materials, secondary materials, and case law. There are rare cases when that's not true, and in those moments, you'll want to consult the other search engine or call the helpline for your preferred search engine. My law school allowed representatives from both LexisNexis and Westlaw to present research guides and demonstration sessions on campus on a weekly basis throughout the academic year. So check to see if your law school hosts similar presentations as they will be instrumental in teaching you how to perform searches that produce accurate results. These search engines often offer tutorials within the platforms to assist you in your searches, recommend search indicators or helpful words, and recommend similar research materials based upon your searches. These search engines will also have filters that you can check to place parameters around searches so that your results are accurate and narrowed. Filters may include, but are not limited to the follow. So you could have filters related to judges, related to date ranges, federal versus national cases and laws, civil versus criminal, different court levels, right? So the trial court versus the appellate court versus the Supreme Court, and that's both at the state and national level. There'll also be secondary materials that you can filter out as well that discuss, explain, analyze, and critique the law. And this is excellent for insertion into your rule explanation on a CREAC, for example. Areas of the law, you can also filter by those areas of the law. You can filter with keywords and or phrases. And those are a little bit of the ways you can work on filtering your legal searches throughout your legal search engines in order to come up with the best possible legal search for your particular topic area. So you guys, that's all the information that I have for you for part one of legal writing. If there's anything I'm forgetting or anything you would like me to supplement that I didn't touch, please feel free to drop it below in the comments and I will be sure to respond to you with either uploading a supplemental video or just responding directly to your comments. It. And then also, please feel free to like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel because it really helps me to grow it and reach more audiences like you out there. And then share it with a friend, right? If there's someone that you know who is entering their first semester of law school who could benefit from this video, someone who may be considering law school or someone who's already in their law school journey and maybe they just need some additional tips and tricks and best practices when it comes to legal writing, please refer them to this video. You never get too old or too experienced experience to sharpen and to get better with your legal writing. It's a constant skill you will be working on for the rest of your legal career. So again, thank you so much for being here. I know that you could have been anywhere in the world. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. And I will see you guys next time when we talk about part two of legal writing. Bye guys.